been doing finishing work on the lower's mouth. Um, got to the point where just putting the last spots on it, barring on it. Uh, I don't use black. The best thing to use it, to me is scale detail green. It's a polytransport color. Um, it's like a real thin down green that's got a little black mixed in it. Uh, but it usually gives it a little bit more of a, it has kind of a green look to it. Uh, but once you, you, you paint it up, uh, your spots don't get quite as dark and, and it'll look black uh, once you gloss it up. So, but I do all of these freehand. Some customers want you to paint it uh, exactly like a picture they have of it. Uh, this one didn't. Uh, sometimes they want you to, to paint it without uh, boring, but uh, you know, that's their camouflage. You uh, don't put any of this on there. kind of looks plain. So, Some of them will say that it wasn't there. Most of the time the fish has got it. Sometimes it'll be lighter. Than, uh, some of them are lighter than others, but uh, usually they've got it. Every now and then we'll catch them in a pond here and fish will be about silver, but uh, and that's usually like a real muddy pond. It stays muddy all the time. Typically, a large mouth is going to have this. Should be the top of your bars that's coming in the middle. Try to keep them kind of straight. Make them random shapes. You don't want to make a bunch of diamonds or something. I've seen these painted and it just be diamonds. They're not necessarily diamonds. Uh, just random spots and. I'll come back after I put some in and start adding a little stuff here and there to break it up even more. Take your time. Uh, you can kind of tell a fish if it's been blown through and somebody's trying to get in a rush painting. I keep mine turned way down so when I start spraying these, I start out light. Just go back and darken some of them if I need to. On the side of the head, uh, in competition, I've had judges tell me that you got one stripe, two stripes, that there's not a third one. Now, if you look at a, a picture of a large mouth with his mouth closed, that third stripe actually looks like the trailing end of that bone right there when it's folded in it's it's going to be slightly green so in some pictures it appears black and it appears that there's a third line uh, I quit putting a third line on it took a couple back to a competition and the judges counted off they said oh you ain't got your third line so I can't decide myself uh, to me it does look like some judges have told me that it's actually that, uh, which I'm pretty sure is called the mandible, uh, that there's, uh, you know, the green there when it folds in, it looks like a third line. I, I don't know. I use scale detail green in my places where I fix my fins. I'm going to start out shading the back of the fin. And to me, you want to, you know, keep your fin painting to a minimal, but it's 
So basically prior to this I've used white, silver pearl, metallic green pearl, shimmering green, bronze gold, and now, like I said, the spot pattern is put on with uh, scale detail green. Uh, most most of the time I'm using poly transform colors. I do use some in life tone. I still use lacquer. I don't really like the water based. But if you're using the lacquer, of course you want some ventilation. Uh, in my time, I've probably been around it too much. I shake a little bit. Who knows, that might be from long time exposure to that junk. But take care of yourself. kind of see how it's going you can as I turn the fish I don't know if you can see it on there but I can see the the gold and the shimmering green when you apply those you want to kind of put it in different angles uh, put it from that way that way that way and be constantly moving it you don't want hot spots hot spots where you're holding an airbrush in one place too too much and you get a real dark green spot or if you're spraying bronze gold, get a real gold spot. You don't want that. You want everything kind of blended. Uh, when I spray my white on, I'm holding the fish like this. And then if I'm missing any spots, I come back and kind of shade it in. Same thing with my green pearl. I'm going to spray it from the top down, and they kind of meet there and kind of blend together. If you're sitting there spraying your where your lines come together like that with your green white, it ain't gonna work. Uh, spray it at the angle, it'll it'll kind of blend together in the end a little better. So, uh, but I try to you know spend some time on it. No, my fish has two sides. Paint both of them. Now sometimes when you're painting spots like this, you're going to need, uh, they make stuff that they call retarder. Uh, it's basically slowing down drying time. When you turn the airbrush down like this, you're trying to spray fine spots. Sometimes it'll, the airbrush will clog up. It's kind of drying on the needle and all. There what I've got so far. basically got most of my barn done the way I'm gonna do it. Uh, see it's basically how I do a commercial largemouth now if I'm doing one for competition uh, I'm gonna do a little bit more by hand. I'm gonna use makeup, uh, finger paints, fingernail polish. Uh, I've got a little bit of everything I use for competition fish. Sometimes I throw a little bit on these commercial fish, but uh, you got to make money, you know, give somebody a good product. Uh, you can't spend a thousand hours on it, though. Okay, now here's a tip. I hate seeing red overspray all in a fish's mouth. Uh, so this right here is the best thing to do when you go to uh, paint the gills on a fish. I'll stuff paper towels in the mouth. It takes a ton of them to fill up a large mouse mouth, so usually what I do is push it a little more to whatever side I'm painting. When I get done with it, a couple minutes later I'll kind of push it more to that side. That way when you go to spray them, you're not spraying too much up in there. And then at the same time, I'll use carding of some kind in behind the gills, try to keep it from in there. Uh, sometimes you'll look in somebody's fish and there's red paint everywhere. Uh, there's no sense in that. You ought to better take a couple minutes and, and you know take your time, do something like this, move it around. Sometimes I use two pieces. I'll put one up here next to the gill cover and keep it there, and then use the other one 
a little bit moving around. Just spray a little bit of it at a time. Uh, you won't get that red everywhere. So.